You're talking about what the grandfather's paradox, the old uh, <sighs> if I go back in time and I kill my grandfather, what will happen? Or maybe can you explain to the audience about that and the uh, different connotations? Sure. Uh, paradoxes are more or less the primary physical laws of the realm of time travel, uh, hyperspace, whatever you would want to call that fourth pardon me, temporal dimension that includes the seventh direction of motion in space as half of its scalar. Paradoxes are uh, the laws of physics for time travel. They're, they replace the laws of logic. So the grandfather paradox is the one that states uh, if you were to go back in time, you could kill your own grandfather, thus preventing yourself from having been born and preventing yourself from being able to go back in time to kill your own grandfather. So it creates the logical conundrum of, uh, you know, if X, then Y, but then if Y, not X. Well, I think of it, uh, the, the easiest way for me to visualize it is, is uh, temporal cartography. So it's like a map. And then uh, using that map, you could apply it to more physical situations later. But the map itself is easy enough to visualize inside the mind uh, geometrically and topologically. Um, so like if you were to... Go back in time and kill your grandfather, thus preventing yourself from being able to go back in time. You would create a closed time-like curve. A closed time-like curve in four uh, spatial uh, dimensions uh, causes gravity in three spatial dimensions that causes change over time. It causes entropy to occur in the uh, confines of the local universe. It's the hyperspace uh, shape or torus or sphere or whatever the hyper surrounding the local universe is itself a closed time-like curve and uh, is itself uh, self referential itself, isomorphic, self-connecting. We're talking about uh, the chronological protection conjecture of Stephen Hawking that, that basically says if... Uh, if any time closed time like curve event uh, were to occur, the effect of it would be distributed so as to conserve the uh, the violation of the second principle of thermodynamics, uh, the principle of entropy. Uh, so, if X amount of energy is created, then somewhere else Y amount of matter has to be destroyed or why amount of energy has to be reformed into matter or something like that. Yeah, I was just thinking that the conservation of energy is is violated by any kind of time travel or forward or backwards, right? Because here I am of a certain amount of mass. If I also disappear out of this time and reappear 20 years ago, then there's like missing energy. And, uh, and exactly. Mass. Exactly. Mm. You'd have to create some sort of... Uh, uh, ballast or something <laughs> replacement <laughs> yeah exactly you'd have to have some uh, yeah but where would it come from right proxy. you know you got the whole universe you know you, you can't balance the books but if you well, travel exactly, back in time does that mean that the, some future matter. so the universe collapse events goes back in time to or what would happen well the theory is it would either create an alternate parallel dimensional timeline uh oh. We're that getting Donnie Darko from the mainstream now. timeline, uh, and then terminate sooner than the mainstream timeline uh, okay. as it bifurcates. But um, but of course it would be discontinuous energy-wise, right? The energy was goes beep, all of a sudden, you know, that timeline would be discontinuous energy-wise. Well, when we're talking about a timeline, we're talking about something the size of an entire cosmos as well. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, to say that something like a timeline can just blink out blink out of existence or come to an end when uh, one person leaves it and then creates an alternative uh, parallel dimension timeline and then they can't return that timeline. It seems a little uh, wasteful. 